Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah and I'm a flower farmer in East Yorkshire in the UK and it is the end of February. It's actually the 1st of March today um, but I wanted to do just a little quick farm tour just to show you what's going on on the farm. Last week I posted a video about my new flower growing area which I'm really excited about so I just wanted to walk around the farm and tell you what's going on with that in mind and also show you what's going on in the greenhouses and what projects we've got going on at the moment. So here in the greenhouse I've had some issues with mice as you can see they've been chewing on my broad bean seeds so they need re-sowing um, and also the peas they've made a bit of a mess. Um, I have actually caught two mice in here I'm not sure how many there is but usually there's only one or two culprits so Hopefully if I re-sow they're not going to cause any more problems. It's a bit frustrating because I had sweet peas and things like that that I was looking forward to planting out quite soon in the field but unfortunately it's going to have to wait a little bit longer. Um, here I have some dill, some snapdragons which are germinating. The, the, um, the mice haven't had those so you can see there we've got some germination. Um, they're going to be sort of companion planting for the veg and then we've got some onions there and here we have some Calibri poppies that I started back in January just as an experiment. I started those in soil blocks under the heat mats and grow lights and they seem to have done okay uh, and then some snapdragons that I just put in as a bonus. Uh, there has been something chewing on a couple of them there. And then here we've got some Lysianthus. These honestly haven't changed much at all since they germinated <laughs> a few weeks ago. So they are absolutely tiny. I'm not sure if anything's gonna come of those this season, but we'll see. And then I've also got these Ranunculus, which are looking quite nice. Um, these are ready to be planted out. So they are going to be planted out next week sometime in the field uh, under a a tunnel, a low tunnel. I've also got some tomato seedlings here which were germinated under a heat mat and grow light. These could probably do to be somewhere a little bit warmer but um, I haven't really got anywhere at the moment and I I could maybe put some fleece or something over them on an evening because um, they're not looking too happy but hopefully they'll survive and we can have lots of tomatoes in the summer. This was also a tray of lettuce and I wasn't sure whether the mice had got these lettuce seeds so I kind of neglected this tray but then I saw the seedlings popping up so um, I watered it because I wasn't watering it um, but something has been chewing on these as well so you can see I don't know if it's like a slug or a snail or even a, a mouse has been in here um, I'm taking a few of those off so I could do to sow a bit more lettuce as well which is a shame, but um, hopefully we've kept on top of the mouse situation now and we can research some things. Upsetting, isn't it? When you put some energy into something that you are looking forward to and excited about and some pest comes along and destroys it. So this is my triangle field, which is about to become more of a, a garden slash veg patch area. And this is the area really that I want to tidy up because it's kind of looking a bit scruffy. I know it's winter and farms do look a bit scruffy in winter but it's not um, really what I want to be seeing every day when I step out of the house. <laughs> so this is all gonna, there's some perennials here but I'm gonna wait until they've finished flowering and I'm going to move them afterwards into the new field and then I'm hoping this area is going to be a bit more of a uh, fruit orchard or some planted area and then maybe kind of a seated area or fire pit kind of thing which would be nice and um, this actually was a cover crop that I put in um, last season so that's improving <laughs> soil health down here we've got some sedum which um, will have to stay in probably until the end of the season I might take the weed membrane off of this actually because it gets really dense and I don't think it's gonna really let any weeds through this is a bed that I cleared the other day. I'm not sure what to put in here actually. Um, I kind of need to come up with a design for this area so that I've got a plan in mind um, for what I'm going to do with it because uh, at the moment I haven't really got a clue. These eucalyptus are going to need coppicing uh, this month. At the middle of the month I'm, I think I'm going to coppice a few of these and I'm going to use the uh, the trunks for bean pearls or pea um, trellises. This is my tulip and narcissi patch 
the tulips are coming along slowly. I hope they are going to be successful this season um, and the narcissi are coming along a little bit as well. So hopefully we'll be able to sell some of those in April time. So this is where it begins, where I've um, planted my rhubarb and this is the start of the um, growing without the weed membrane. So it's going to be interesting to see how, how that works out. These two beds are dahlias. Um, I did actually try to sow a cover crop on this, but as you can see, it came out very sparse. So um, that's maybe one for experimenting with again this year. And then here I've got, oh, don't know if you can hear Hector and Cyril having a little bit of a squabble. Um, here I've got some asparagus um, crowns in the centre of the bed and then at the end there I've planted some garlic and I've actually got some more garlic to plant there but I'm thinking of companion planting that with some carrots when I start sowing things directly in the ground. So this bed here has got a couple of perennial grasses in but I want to really move those um, and it's got some sea oats there and this is eyelash pearl grass and then this has been annual grasses so I want to get rid of this bed here so that I can grow veg in it and um, those grasses aren't really useful but there's a few weeds in there so it needs covering up and killing those off ready for planting veg. This bed is another one that I'm probably going to get rid of before the start of the season. That is a Dusty Miller and um, there's a couple of varieties of Dusty Miller there and um, they weren't very useful in bouquets last year so I don't think I'm going to allow those to grow into um, this season. This is another bed that I cleared that is just being killed off. There was a few bits of grass and things in there so I've covered it over and then in a couple of weeks time I'll lift that off and plant into it with veg. Then we've got a dahlia bed here. I'm not sure whether the dahlias have survived well over this winter because those two beds over there I managed to um, kind of clear those up and mulch with lots of compost and this bed, this bed and this bed didn't get mulched so I'm worried about those but um, I have got lots more dahlias on order for this season. This here was a bed of artichokes um, but uh, I haven't, don't think I've got many surviving however I have got some over there in the field so I'm going to um, probably move those over here. In here a couple of the perennials are starting to grow back so I've got oryngiums and some salvia and some lamb's ear and things like that. I've got quite a bit of lamb's ear which is um, going to be thinned out a little bit this season and then I've also got some geums, some hypericum, some hydrangeas, some pittosporum and then I've got some verbena hastata and some nine bark. That all needs um, moving over but I think I'm going to leave that until next winter. I can't remember whether I mentioned this on my um, videos but I planted um, wildflowers here in front of the teepee so when we have workshops hopefully in spring summer this is going to be a lovely wildflower patch. Um, last week I planted some foxglove seedlings in between and hopefully they will um, flower this season because I think that's going to look really nice within the wildflowers. I also planted a row of eucalyptus trees along here. Um, I moved them from the bed where I planted the asparagus over to here because I think they'll make a better screen than um, than being in one of these beds here. So. Um, the other thing I did last week is I finished mulching the raspberry canes so I've mulched those with leaves looking forward to lots more raspberries this season so that's it really for this field and um, this needs a major tidy up uh, and apart from that that's it so I'm looking forward to when it comes to March time or when the soil's a bit warmer direct sowing some things into these beds over here I haven't give you, given you a tour of the worm farm lately um, and it is on my to-do list but we have changed the way that we do things slightly so we're not growing worms in these boxes anymore. We've decided to put them into these big troughs so we've got one, two, three, four, five different containers that we're growing worms in and yesterday I fed the worms with some um, compost that I made last season 
that didn't quite work out properly. It didn't reach the proper temperatures, but I thought the worms might like it. And um, I tested a patch last week of some and the worms seem to love it. So I've put some in here and hopefully they'll work the way through that and finish it off for me. So last week I managed to finish putting the glass into here. I've actually got a glass cutter coming today so that I can finish off these corner pieces because these aren't actually um, filled with glass just yet. So I've got that to do. And we'll just have a quick look in this greenhouse. I sewed lots of things last week or the, even a week before. I want to sew more, but I'm going away tomorrow and I just wanted to wait until I got back to sew anything else and it has been quite chilly so I'm thinking if I just wait a little bit longer things will come along quite nicely when it gets a little bit warmer. In terms, in terms of germination we haven't actually had much germination just yet. I can see that the gomfrina there is starting to pop up and so we've got some achillea popping up there and stocks coming along but we haven't got anything yet from the larkspur uh, I've got some eucalyptus and what else the snapdragons and then up here I've got some wheat that I sowed for the chickens so that's going to hopefully give them a bit of greenery until we can get them out on the grass and then we've got some more stocks down here and then here is my soil blocking table so we had problems with mice in here as well um, I didn't actually catch any mice in here, but they haven't been back to eat anything. So here we've got some helichrysum, or oh, actually no, it's helipterum. And then in here I've got some cornflower and some asters. That's mainly going to be a veg patch um, kind of thing, because I'm not really growing cornflowers this year for cutting. And then this was the... Uh, thing that was disturbed by the mice so i've got scabious and some marigolds i don't think i'm really going to get good marigold germination here because i think even though the seeds still look like they're whole i think that the mouse has taken the actual seed out of it i think that's just the seed coat that's left so i'm not sure about those and then in here i've got some snapdragons i've just noticed there's a couple you can probably see the whiteness of them there that are germinating so that's going to be interesting i'm really looking forward to seeing how the plants do in these soil blocks i let a little bit of water get to um the water poured a bit too quickly onto that one there so it's caused it to erode a little bit i'm kind of getting a bit um itchy about the way that that looks but i'm trying to leave that in because it's not a necessary job that needs doing right now i'm trying to focus on more important things like getting my seeds started and getting um, the infrastructure sorted um so here is my cover crop bed which is looking quite nice um when i know when i'm going to be planting in that i'll kill it off for a few weeks beforehand the foxgloves are looking quite happy and healthy and growing on a little bit now that we're getting more light and a little bit more warm temperatures uh, we've got here we've got ami and some corn cockle at the end there this one's empty and then this was canterbury bells i noticed they did get sort of grazed down a little bit by something i'm not sure what it was but they are starting to come back a little bit i'm going to be putting some stocks and some ranunculus in this tunnel as well so um they can go on the in the in between pieces of the canterbury bells and also a little bit further up there as well um this was a lark spare bed that i planted but something has eaten this i think it might have been rabbits this field was rabbit secure but it's not anymore because i've um faffed about with the fencing over behind the polytunnel there so that really needs sorting so that we don't get problems with rabbits and then back there we've got some foxgloves as well to add to the foxglove collection over here this is a cover crop as well um, you can see where the weed membrane hasn't quite been fastened back there and it's been flapping on the bed and it's caused that cover crop piece to die there which is a shame so that's going to be good and then that will just be covered up to kill off before we start planting
this is all self-seeded auric i'm tempted to um get some of it pick some of it out and just plant it in the field because i always get, struggle to sow it in seed trays and it, it always does really well when it just self germinates outside <laughs> The chickens are doing well in here. We have got the chicken tractor almost ready so they can go out onto grass soon. Um, the cover crop experiment that I started didn't quite work out because the chickens kept flying over the netting or they were kind of escaping down the side of those bars there into the cover cropped area. So the cover crop didn't get a chance to establish so what I'm going to do is put them out in the chicken tractor and then I'm going to sow the co cover crop again, keep it well watered and cover cropped in here and then bring the chickens back when it's ready to graze on. So hopefully we'll have sorted the weed issue in the, in the polytunnel. We haven't had any kind of new growth of anything in here. However, it is quite dry. So we'll have to see um, what's going to happen in here in the season to come. As you can see, we're having issues with the silage tarps blowing up, which is really frustrating. I was saying to Rob yesterday, we were putting them back down and I was saying it's really annoying because it's going to set us back with killing off the grass if it keeps flying up. So we really need to sort out something heavier that's going to weigh those um, tarps down and kill off that grass. I also have another roll of uh, silage tarp there that I need to finish killing off the grass in that section up there so that we can um, get a cover crop sown and then see how that develops over the summer. So the chicken tractor is going to be used in this field here and I might even see if I can drag it into here to graze the cover crop down as well. Um, we, what I'm going to do is let the chickens graze one area for one day and then I'm going to move it along and along and along. And um, I was speaking to somebody yesterday about the chicken tractor. They said that even now you can still see the greener squares where the chicken tractor has been. So you can see how, how the nitrogen of the chicken poop and the grazing has affected the grass and made it grow really nice and healthy. So that is it guys, that is a quick tour of the, the flower farm and what's going on at the moment. Um, things are a little bit quiet because I am going away tomorrow for a week and um, I didn't really want to take too much on before I went away and leave somebody else responsible for looking after my seedlings because I have been on holiday plenty of times before and been disappointed at the results when I come home and I don't want to have that situation so I'm confident that the plants can wait a little bit longer so what I'm going to do is just have a mad sowing session when I get home and carry on preparing for the season ahead so i'll be filling you in with everything when i get back and i'm looking forward to getting all of the rest of my seeds sown and getting some new benches put in my greenhouses and i've also um and on also i really desperately need to plant those trees around the perimeter of this new field as well so lots and lots to do if anybody's in the local area and you want to come and help then i would be eternally grateful thanks so much for watching this video guys and i'll see you on the next one